What's up guys, I'm Rustin from RustinBirdTech.com and today is video one of my Raspberry Pi B Plus Cluster Supercomputer video series. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys all the parts you'll need to follow along with this video. Then we'll uh, start installing all the parts together. In part two, I'll set up Raspbian. I'll show you guys how to set up the Raspberry Pis to connect them so they act as one computer. And in video three, we're actually gonna use programs to take advantage of the Raspberry Pi cluster. All right guys, so if you guys hadn't seen a Raspberry Pi before, this is a Raspberry Pi right here. This is a Raspberry Pi B Plus, and I have four of these. I'm gonna use four of these to create a cluster computer. Now, these are very cheap. They're like $35 a piece, and I recommend you get the B Plus because the B Plus is the updated version. It has four USB ports instead of two. The design is better, and it's just a little bit better than the previous version. If you guys want to follow along, I'm going to be using four of these, but you can use two of them if you want. If you want to buy four of them, you could buy two of them and you could follow along with the video. It should be fine. All right, in the next clip, I'm going to show you all the things you're going to need to buy to get this thing started. All right, guys, so this is all the parts I'm going to use to build the Raspberry Pi cluster supercomputer. Now, over here, I have four Raspberry Pis. As you can see, this is a Raspberry Pi. This is how it looks out of the box. And I have four of them. And over here, we're going to need to power each Raspberry Pi. So I have here four micro USB cables. These are cool, they're like 10 bucks. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. If you guys have any of these laying around, these are the same cables that you use to connect to your uh, like Android phones, I think you use uh, micro USB. So if you have any of them laying around, you can use those. But if you like these cables, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. I have four micro SD cards. We're gonna need the micro SD cards so we can load Raspbian and connect the Raspberry Pis into a cluster. You're gonna need four of them. Uh, it's recommended that you get at least four gigabytes. I have two four gigabyte and two 16 gigabytes. At least four gigabytes is recommended. So depending on how many Raspberry Pis you're gonna use, you're gonna need equal amounts of cables to uh, SD cards. So again, you don't have to use four Raspberry Pis. You can follow along my video. You need a minimum of two Raspberry Pis, but I wanna use four instead. So again, if you have two Raspberry Pis, you're gonna need two cables and two SD cards. If you have four Raspberry Pis, four cables and four micro SD cards. Next up, you're gonna need a switch. Now, this is uh, the switch here, the neck gear. I did a review on this, a port gigabyte switch. Uh, if you guys are interested, check out that video. It doesn't have to be a gigabyte switch. All you need is a regular switch. And this was like 50 something bucks. If you get a regular one that's not gigabit, it's like 20 something dollars. So I recommend you guys also get a USB hub. Uh, this is a powered USB hub. It has to be a powered USB hub. You could connect all your Raspberry Pis to this and you don't have to worry about these power adapters connecting to each one of the cables. So all you have to do is connect your Raspberry Pis up into these USB powered hubs and they should have enough power to get it going. And you're also gonna need uh, ethernet cables. I created these ethernet cables and uh, if you know how to create your own, you could cut them and crimp them yourself. Otherwise, you're gonna need equal amount of uh, ethernet cables. Depending on how many Raspberry Pis you're gonna use, if you're gonna use two, you can need at least two ethernet cables. If you're gonna use four or more, you need as many as you have Raspberry Pis. Finally, I have here two parts. Uh, these are cases that you can stack on top of each other. And you don't need this, but I thought it was cool. And I and this, you'll be able to stack up four Raspberry Pis. With two of these, you'll be able to stack up four Raspberry Pis. Again, it's not needed but I thought it was cool. And again, I'm gonna leave a link to these in my description. All right guys, so now we're gonna connect all these pieces together. All right guys, so as you can see, I finished setting up the case here and this is a stackable case. I didn't go through the process of uh, actually installing the case. I'm gonna leave it to you guys. It wasn't that difficult to do. And as you can see, this thing is freaking amazing. It's beautiful, I, I love it. It looks pretty freaking cool. But yeah, this is the four Raspberry Pis in this stackable case. Again, I'm gonna leave all the links to these pies and especially the case in the description and all the parts I use to create this here. But yeah, this is freaking amazing. Now I'm gonna set this aside. All right, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is connect the micro USB cables to the Raspberry Pi and connect the other end to our powered switch here. This is a powered USB hub and this will power all our Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you're gonna do is take our micro USB end and connect it to the power port here, which is this port here, lock it in. Let's get the other cable and do the same thing. Let's bring this up here and just lock this in. Now, the third cable. Let's just get this here and lock it in. And now the final cable here. Let's lock it in. All right, so now we're gonna take our other end here, the USB part, and actually connect it to our USB hub. This is the first one here. This red one is the second one here. This is the third. This one here is the fourth. 
All right, so I just used those ties that came with the cable so I could do a little wire management here. So I cleaned it up a bit so it looks a lot better. And as you can see right here, this is the powered USB hub. This end here connects to uh, your wall outlet and all your Raspberry Pis are connected to this one hub and this should power all the Raspberry Pis here. So this is a, a neat, more efficient way to do it. Or you can actually have four or as many uh, power bricks as you want connected to each individual cable, but that looks a bit sloppy and there's more uh, things you have to connect to the outlet. This, in my opinion, using a powered hub is the neatest way to do it. All right, so the next step is to connect your ethernet cables from the Raspberry Pi to the switch. So again, I brought this Netgear uh, A port switch. This is a gigabit switch. You don't need to get a gigabit switch. I paid 50 bucks for this one, but you can get a cheaper version of it that's not gigabit. It should work fine. But yeah, let's just connect the cables to our Raspberry Pi. All right, so as you can see, we got all four Raspberry Pis connected to uh, this uh, powered USB hub here. They're all connected to the Raspberry Pi end. They're connected to this end. And over here, we have all of our Raspberry Pis connected with a ethernet cable and that ethernet cable is connected to this switch here. All right guys, so all the parts I used and I showed you in this video are gonna be listed in the description. So if you guys wanna follow along, all those parts are listed in the description. All right guys, so stay tuned for part two of my Raspberry Pi cluster supercomputer video series. In that video, I'll show you guys how to actually set up Raspbian and connect the Raspberry Pis together to act as one uh, supercomputer. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rissin from RossmerTech.com and thanks for watching.